Hey guys, how you doing? We got a real special one for you today. But before we start, I just want to thank ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video and making it possible. Without a VPN, your data is like a postcard that can be seen by all sorts of people before it reaches its final destination. With ExpressVPN, your data is encrypted and sent through a secure tunnel, similar to putting that postcard into a super secure envelope. And that's exactly why I use ExpressVPN. I want my private data to remain private, and I bet you do too. Even though your search history is completely normal and clean and could be broadcast on family-friendly daytime television, just like mine, yeah, you're, you're still gonna want this thing, even though, even though there's that. Luckily, ExpressVPN is super easy to use. All you need to do is open it up and click to connect. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like driving a car without insurance. Don't do it. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash jontron or clicking the link in my description box below. So make sure you're protected with ExpressVPN by going to the link in my description and signing up today. Okay, time for the video. What's that? Tokyo? Sydney? Sydney? No, that's my wife, Sydney, not the, not the country. Talk to Tokyo. I'm a high speed man, I'm a high tech, I'm a, I'm a high efficiency man for a high speed age. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. Jakarta, don't get off the line. No, I'm high efficiency. This, I'm high. Jakarta! All this shit is. This is confusing me. What is that, Roman? Is that Roman in language? I don't speak Roman, we speak English. What is this? I can't understand. I'm losing productivity looking at this. What is this? It should just be like this everywhere. My mind can understand that. I'm a Wall Street guy. Hey! I want you to take the shares, and I want you to, like in play school we learned, we share it with everybody. For God's sakes, I gotta get a coffee. My bean count is low. Excuse me, you know where I can get a coffee? Excuse me, you know where I can get a coffee? You know where I can get a coffee? I thought this is Bean City, for God's sake! Nobody tell me where I get a goddamn coffee! Where am I supposed to get a coffee in the city? I can't understand any of the logos. What is this supposed to be? Dun Dunkin? I can't understand. This is too complicated. Excuse me, what do they sell here? Coffee. Coffee? Well, how am I supposed to know? They don't got a coffee on the logo, for God's sakes. I don't get it. This, is, this, this city is confusing. Well, all, the, all these corporations, I can't make heads or tails of any of this. What is that supposed to mean? All these, all these companies, these corporations with their freaking hieroglyphics, can they make this more clear for a guy like me? I got places to be. Corporate logos, okay? These things, uh, I gotta say, lately they've been making a, you know, a valiant attempt, at least making an attempt at all, uh, to make these uh, simpler so I can understand them. But guys, Come on, how many billions of dollars do you have at your disposal? And this is the best you can come up with? We, we've gotta fix this, guys, okay? That's why today I've decided I'm gonna sit here and I'm going to simplify uh, corporate logos. Because let's face it, these things are inefficient, these things are bulky, half the time I can't even tell what company it's for anymore. I'm gonna do a public service. Everyone is losing so much brain power and productivity on these highly complex corporate logos. So yeah, we're gonna go and we're gonna look at how different uh, company logos have evolved over time. And then we're gonna, you know, try to simplify them one further. And uh, you know, if any of you companies out there, I know you got a lot of money, especially after the giant wealth transfer that happened in the last year and a half that the middle class didn't notice all the wealth transfer, all the money that was being sucked from the, from the middle class to the, to the, root, to the uh, one to elite class. I know you have the money. <laughs> Let's just get to it, huh? Fuck you. Okay, so let's go through the history of the MasterCard logo. 1966 to 1979, we had this one. Master Charge, the Interbank card. It's not even called MasterCard yet, it's called Master Charge. I guess this maybe was like the inception of the credit card. What is it, 1966? The beginning of the decline? Makes sense. And then I actually like this one, 1996 to 2016. You know, this one was very highly recognizable. You'd go to like a transit hub or like a convenience store. They got the MasterCard, the Visa, the Amex logo there. I like it. They just added a drop shadow and made the lines thicker than the last one. I didn't I didn't even know they changed it to that. It pops out at you. But I think we can go simpler. Here we've got our new fangled logo. Let's make it even better. Here we go. Is 
It's a masterpiece. I'm talented. Let's move on. Okay, number two, The Gap. 1969, we went to the moon, and that was pretty much the end of it. Uh, here we have the original, I never, okay, I did not know this was the, the original logo for The Gap. So here we have the 1969 uh, to 1976 Gap logo. The Gap. We're falling here. It'd make more sense if there was like a chasm between the G and the A where the the was falling into. That was the Gap. As far as I can tell here, it's more of a stop gap. Should be called the stop gap. That's my appraisal of the old Gap logo. Then uh, they, <laughs> they think they came to the same conclusion in 1986. They straightened out the the. All right, here's the one we know and love. Uh, 1986 to 2016. What did, did all, it, it feels like within the last five years, all companies have just been like, it's been good too long. All right, sorry, let's go back. Then we, <laughs> that's the new one. We found the gap. You gotta view this one from a hundred feet back to see what you're looking at. It's like a fucking magic eye puzzle disgustingly complex. Let's fix this son of a bitch. An instant classic. Just get that over there, get that over there. Let's move on to a different one, shall we? Okay, next up, Adobe. Now, in case you're not familiar with Adobe, uh, this is a company very uh, near and dear to our heart here because uh, we make a majority of this stuff on Adobe products. We take pride in Adobe. We take it very seriously when Adobe does stuff. You know, when they update stuff. So uh, here's the old Adobe logos. Gross, I mean, come on. You could tell that's Photoshop. Photoshop's a nice blue uh, premiere, the editing software. It's like a nice pink purple. Flash is red. The audio software is green. No, this won't do. This status quo won't do. Change it. Ooh. Much better. You're not feeling this? But you can't tell. You can't tell them apart. You mean you can't down there on the taskbar? You can't tell them all apart now, like you could before by sight. What? What is with these companies? Honestly, like nothing was wrong with the way it was before. You, each one had its own color. You could tell exactly which program was what, which is kind of important when you're working in professional programs when they're on your taskbar. No, says Adobe. No, it's not important. By the way, you can't change, it's impossible to change. All right, I'm saying you can, you can still tell, tell this apart. You can tell that's Premiere, that's After Effects, that's Audacity, that's me. That won't do. Let's get real. Go ahead, try editing now. Fucking try. Now that's a taskbar. Now that's a taskbar I can work with. Now, uh, I need more. I don't want to be able to remember how to save my project, all right? If we're not doing the whole thing from memory, what's the point? And this, oh, frankly, the arrow, too. We don't want any short, just cover that up. It's on you, your move, Adobe. Okay, on to a fan favorite, Apple, who may be the culprit behind this whole disaster of super simplifying that we're in. And uh, what was their first logo in 1976? Well, it was well, it was that. Look at that thing. Does that look like Apple's logo to you? If you look at the logo history of Apple, though, it's uh, it's pretty interesting because it changes one year after that and never looks back. So yeah, they quickly changed after 1976, as you can see. But they've been, they, they've been the most consistent of anyone. We had the multicolored one in 1977. 95, we get their more skewmorphic. That's some vocab for you. Ironically, they went. It looks like the current Apple logo and the one from 1998 are the same. So this this is the first brand that just went back to an old logo. Okay, so confirmed, this is the modern Apple logo. Sometimes it comes in gray, uh, but it's it's this. So like I said, we've gotta be modern. How do we make this even more sleek? All right, next up, Life is Good, an American apparel company. I didn't know too much about this company. It's kind of a small company, but uh, I, I had seen these logos around. All right, here, we're bouncy, we're fun, we're light, life is good, we're wearing a beret or some shit. Nice. Our font is whimsical, okay? We feel like we're a Dr. Seuss novel, and then uh, rebrand. What the hell is this? I, I'm not buying it. Th this one feels like life is good. This one's like, life, life is good. Let's fix this logo. There we go. We'll just have put this in the background. 
where, where I think it will fit very nice, very snug. I give that a nice little vignette there. Who needs this? <laughs> Life is good, not quite. And so, we, and we can't forget the most important part of this. There we go. That's more like it. Everyone will love that. Put that up. I'll buy the apparel. I might not wear it. I might not get out of bed. Okay, Animal Planet. Uh, here, 1996 to 2006. The one we know and love. Or at least the one we know. I thought this one was pretty cool. This is the one I remember on TV as a kid when you watch like Steve Irwin and shit. So this is the one we know and love. It's with the elephants and the font. It looks great. It's simple, but not too simple. It's got the, the full complex globe in there. I always thought this was a good logo. And then we got a redesign in 2008. That was... Where's the animal? Where's the planet? You're the animal and I want you off this planet. Yeah, this is when they made a brief detour to any three owl planet, which just didn't have the same ring. So yeah, I'm not, I don't care for that one. But you thought that was bad. We got one from 2018. And that's 2018 to today. I'm happy to say the elephant's back, I think, might also just be a shit stain. Let's have a look here. Yeah, we can't, it's not, it's non-conclusive. It's a non-conclusive experiment. So now I gotta simplify it though, right? First thing I notice is we've got some uh, extra space that, you know, could be, this could be shrunk down. So here, how about? Takes care of that. I'm just trying to get it in there. What do you, I don't know what you're talking about. This is perfect. Tusk. All right. Okay. That's my, that's, that's my, that's, that's my, let's move on. Okay, next on the chopping block is Dunkin' Donuts. Now, this is another one that's very close to my heart, maybe more so close to my stomach, because I drink it a lot. Part of their logo is, uh, they say America runs on Dunkin'. Well, I can tell you at least the JonTron offices run on Dunkin', because we get that shit every day. All right, here's our first logo, the one from the from 1950 to 1960. I mean, it, it, it looks like a logo of the period. Definitely it's got that 50s, 60s diner vibe, so. In the middle though, in 1956, they changed their logo to this. It's like the Michelin man, if he was a burn victim. I don't know about this logo. I don't know about this logo. I think they, they transitioned out of that one quickly in 1960 to this guy. So 1960 to 1976. Okay, this one's actually clever. It's like, you're dunking the dunk. I figured it out. I decoded it. I'm a, ge I'm a genius. You saw it happen live. Think about how lucky you are. And then in 2007, that's the one I recognize. I really, this was, I don't know about you guys. I think that was the best of the logos. What do you think? Yeah. I love the little, the little steam rising off the coffee, even though it'd probably be spilling at that angle. There we go. Safety first. Doesn't even, doesn't look as bad as I was expecting. I'm not gonna lie to you. So this is their present logo. They were at HQ and they're like, just rip half the fucking logo off. No, I know, I know what you're thinking. That looks shit. That looks terrible. It actually looks like something my eyes want to see. Duncan. Yeah, that sounds cool, guys. Duncan. It was the donuts that made the Duncan cool. You can't just go around Duncan without the donuts, dude. <coughs> they didn't even leave the fucking coffee on. Look at yours. Look at mine. Yours, mine. That's all you got to do, baby. If you're not selling donuts anymore, at least tell them you're selling coffee. So, Duncan, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great logo and all, but like I said, just like the others, you've fallen into the trap of making this far too hard to understand. So I was thinking, I'll do you the favor. I'm helping you out, guys. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm helping you out. You're not gonna sell as so much coffee this way, I'm telling you. I know, the, I know the way that the youth are now. You guys wanna get some? <laughs> I'm really tired. I could use some <laughs> Don't say I never did nothing for you, okay? And this one, on the house. All the coffee you've supplied us with over the years, this one, I will not pursue legal action. Which brings us to Smuckers. That's right, the American staple. Pretty much any diner you go to will have one of these bad boys. So I'm pretty sure most people know Smuckers. This is a company that's got a place that looks like this. So you know they're not gonna try to fuck with shit, right? 
You're an idiot. You're wrong. Like I said, they got a ranch that looks like this. This already looks great. We got two beautiful strawberries, ripe, plump. That's pretty much set for the next three centuries. Wrong. That's the James Smucker coat. Did, why, you don't get that? That doesn't look like strawberries to me, okay? That looks like the hot spread I get on my Italian hoagie down on 8th Street in Jersey. It doesn't look like, like fucking strawberries. What's with the, what's with like the green one? Is that supposed to be like an unripe strawberry or some, some other? Is that supposed to be like another fruit? A pear? It can't be a pear. I was thinking the only thing it could be is a pear. All right, you know, I'm a charitable man. Even though this hurts me deep down, uh, I'm still gonna show them how they can improve this, okay? So now watch closely, you're not gonna wanna miss this. You take this bad boy, you shrink her down, okay? Then you just move right over here, uh, open this guy up uh, to its limit, and then you take this son of a gun and you, you put it, you put it there, fixed. What can I say? I'm a good man, I'm a good person, okay? I like to help people, just make sure you close that up. You don't want the smell stinking up the place. You know, all this gets me thinking. I've gotta update my branding too, right? I mean, if it's good enough for Smuckers, it's good enough for me. I'm just a YouTuber, that's Smuckers. They make $7.8 billion a year on jam, on jam. Wish I made that much. It's time to modernize my logo. For that though, I will need my artist's glove. This is probably gonna take me a long time, so. You know, I wouldn't wait around. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfecto. Okay. Feeling hip, feeling trendy, minimalist. But most of all, feeling a bit like a dipshit. I kind of feel like this here. That, if you compacted that into human form, that's the one I'm feeling like. Feeling like a pollusive weather event. I mean, I thought I was gonna fit in with like Coco Beat and stuff, but nah, I just, oh, I just feel like a bad person. Any takers? One pence? I'm selling for one single pence. Let's give it to somebody who deserves it. I'm putting, uh, the, I'm putting my branding on this guy, on this, this, be, this beautiful basketball player. You know who that is? Is it LeBron James? That's Bill Russell. Who's Bill Russell? Thank you, sir. He's a size XL, XXL.